Um, uh, I have some requests to um, make a video for a um, fish tank overflow uh, siphon. Um, I used to have my, I, the, the video I did on how to make a, or on my uh, fish tank aquaponics setup, um, I had a link in there to a guy who showed how to make one of these. For whatever reason, he removed that video from YouTube. So I've had a lot of people lately asking me, hey, uh, how do you do this? I don't, I can't find a video on it. So I found a couple that weren't very good. One wasn't even in English. So I thought I'd just make a quick video showing how to make the overflow siphon. And this is for folks who don't want to drill a hole in a fish tank. I mean, all, ultimately, the the best kind of drain for the fish tank to go back to the base of, this, of the uh, of your aquaponics setup um, would be a hole with a... Um, uh, a bulkhead in it because you'd never have any issues with that it would just everything overflow would just go out the hole this you don't have to drill a hole in the fish tank it works really well i've never had one fail i'm not saying it couldn't i do kind of want to put a disclaimer on this if you were setting this up in your house and this ever failed and the pump was filling the fish tank up it would overflow the fish tank and be all over your floor you could have you know tens of gallons of water in your house i had this set up in a in a barn on a cement floor so i never worried about that um, but it never did fail me either. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there that if I was setting this up in my house, uh, I, might, I might put some kind of a secondary uh, system, something to catch water. I don't know. I don't even know if I would set this up in my house if I was worried, unless it was in a basement or something. Um, just because if it ever did fail and the pump just kept pumping water into the fish tank every few hours and you wasn't there to, to monitor it, it could overflow and cause a big mess. But anyway, I'll show you how to make this. And um, and hopefully, uh, if you have any questions, you can just ask me below and I'll try to answer them if I miss something or whatever. But it's pretty simple. Uh, like I said, the hardest part is getting the... I'll see. You'll see this in the video uh, as I'm making it. But the hardest part is getting the... Um, you got to hold the, the water in your pipe as you turn it over and try to keep it in there just so you can create a siphon. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a few minutes. So anyway, here here's the pieces you'll need and how to make it. Okay, here's our pieces that we're going to put this together with. What you'll need is uh, some one-inch uh, pieces here. You got these are uh, two uh, one-inch, one inch four, uh, four inches long of the one-inch PVC. These are two inches long. You'll need three of those, so two of the four-inch cut and uh, three of the two-inch. You'll need four of the T's, the one-inch T's. You'll need two one-inch end caps. Um, I already put this together, but you see, you pretty easily see what this is. It's a couple half inch pipe. I think you could use three quarter inch. You'd probably get a quicker flow. It has to fit inside the one inch. The half inch did fine for me. Um, these are uh, about 12 inches long, about 11 and a half inches long, I think, because you, you don't want them. They can go all the way to the bottom. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about, but you even want to angle these a little bit when you cut them um, because uh, so no water, so it won't like basically seal off and the water won't be able to get in the, the, the pipes here. Um, so you don't have to angle them quite this much, but you can just put a slight angle on them. This is a two inch piece, a couple half inch uh, elbows. And uh, that's all you got there. And um, and this is how it goes together. It's pretty simple. I already had this one together just to make sure it worked good. Um, but you got take two of your tees, take one of the two inch pieces and you're gonna join them together like this and just push them together straight. <clears throat> now you're gonna put a four inch on one side and a two inch on the other side. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. And then you're going to put another T, but this one's facing out like this. And the other one's facing, oh, sorry. I'm trying to do this with my phone here. And the other one's facing out this way. This one will be in the tank. This one will be um, flowing out of the tank. And now the reason, as you can see, you want this lower than this one. That's why you're gonna go four and four, but you want these to be the same length in the end. So now you'll put the four inch on this side and the two inch on this side. That way you end up with a, being about the same length here. End caps on each one. And that's your, uh, that's your base piece right there. That's the piece that's gonna slide inside the tank. This side will be in the tank. This side will be outside the tank. And now this piece here, um, you just see how that's joined together pretty, pretty easily. I mean, the two inch piece here, um, these are, like I said, about 11 and a half inches total with an angle cut on them. So they end up about 11 here, about 11 and a half there. Um, if I if you see that 11 and you see the angle, not, it's not even perfect. It doesn't even have to be perfect. It's not a big deal. And then this slides inside of here like that and just drops in. And the thing is, here's why this works. If you've ever seen, like you can create like even water in two, two buckets. Like if you have two buckets set beside each other and 
say um, this one fills up, you can take this, just something like this, and shove in the one bucket. And when this fills up to lower than this side, it'll drop down on this side. You know, you'll, you'll get the water flowing this way. This one raises up, the water will flow this way. Yet, if water's up on it, the flow will keep happening. Well, eventually the water will drop down on one side or it's not even on the other side. This keeps the water up to here on both sides. So you have water sitting in here all the time. And as long as water's sitting in here, you don't lose the siphon. So, but it will stop running when the water gets below this side. So when the water gets below this in the fish tank, of course it quits running. But then the water stays in here, so it stays working for the next time. So as soon as it fills back up, it'll start flowing again because you didn't break the siphon because it's holding water. So I'll show you how this works. And the key is, the, the trick to this is, <laughs> the thing that is most difficult is you got to fill this up with water and then get it in here kind of like holding your fingers over it and kind of lean it in there and without losing the water out of here so that's the only tricky part but once you get it done it stays as long as you don't ever lose the water here or here it'll always have that uh, seal if you ever lose it you'd have to refill this part up here back up try to get it back in there but i'll show you how i do that it's pretty easy i got a bucket of water sitting right over here Okay, I'll go ahead and just get water in this. Not that it's too big of a deal. And then I'll fill this up also. I just dip it down in the water, wait till the air bubble stop. Okay, now that's full of water on both sides. Like I said, your one side goes in, the lower side goes out, the higher side goes in. And here's the trick, like I said, you gotta try to get this in here without losing the water. <laughs> and it can be a little messy doing that. But if it's full, if, it's, if it held its siphon, and I drop that below, water starts running. You probably let me dog it down a little bit. Water's running until it gets below the inside. Once it gets below on the inside, it'll stop running. Now it ain't much of a trickle. Like I said, it doesn't take a lot. It just keeps the water coming out. Thing is, this is already higher. But as soon as it got above the lowest point on this inside, it would start running and it can keep up with your pump if you're not running too much water into it too fast which you don't really want to be running running it too fast anyway I'm trying to keep my phone from falling over here but if i just raise that up it quits running as soon as the water is below that it'll stop running it gets below it it starts running again that's how it works you break this siphon if you pull this up it'll quit working and then you'll have to fill that back up put it back in so that's basically how it works this is the um this is the uh fish tank overflow um, without drilling a hole in the tank so it works pretty good it's not a high volume flow like I said I think you can even make this part out of three quarter and it would flow quicker as long as it fits inside the one inch you could even go one and a half and, and one I mean you could make it as big as you want and get as much flow as you want this did my purposes really well as far as just a half inch pipe you get a half inch flow and that's how fast it'll run out and uh, works pretty good I've even used this on like rain barrels to flow over to another rain barrel and things like that without losing a siphon. I've used it uh, done a few times, but uh, yeah, that's it's that simple and um, it works. And I've never had a break siphon. I had one running for uh, a year in in the fish tank setup in my uh, garage at one point, and it never broke siphon. I think if you was out in the sun, this possibly if it didn't run enough, you know, this could probably evaporate. The water in here could evaporate after time, and it would break siphon. But as long as it's running every few hours and you know like that i think it's always going to hold water in there and you'd be fine so it's getting below it now so it's starting to like trickle out but that's it thanks for watching